so the, the title, How to Build a Mic Locker, the idea is that uh, as an audio engineer, you have a job to do, and that is to create a collection of gear that's going to let you record any session well. And so there's a way to approach that that hasn't been talked about a lot, and that's what I'm hoping to do today. So this picture represents a challenge that everybody has. If you're an audio engineer, okay, everyone's got some number of microphones, um, and most everyone's looking to buy another one. Uh, and, and so the idea is that you don't know what to buy, and you certainly don't want to buy something that sounds exactly the same as everything else that you already own, because what would be the point of that? So the idea is uh, you need to find something that's, that sounds different. So if, uh, if you had $10,000 to spend, sort of a hypothetical question, uh, on microphones, this is one way to do it. Anyone know what this microphone is? Neumann U87, $3,000, $3,200. Very nice microphone, but I would propose a terrible way to spend $10,000. Okay, uh, why on earth would you need three of them? Now, certainly for some things you might need a stereo pair, but a third doesn't really make any sense at all, because what do you do when a singer comes into your studio and you put up your you know, brand new, shiny, never been opened before, $3,200 microphone, and the singer starts to sing and you think, that's not the right sound for that singer. She doesn't sound good through that microphone at all. So you rush out there and you say, one second, take that microphone down, put it away, take out another one? Again, what would be the point of that? So there are better ways to go. The idea of this is sonic diversity, right? Uh, when you're building a microphone locker or a collection of microphones, what you want to do is have things that sound different so that when that singer comes in and doesn't sound great through the microphone who, that you thought would totally kill, you want something else to reach for something that's darker or brighter or richer or something, something else, right? So how do we get sonic diversity? The gray circle here represents the idea that there's, no matter what your, your, your job or your role is, there's a whole universe of sounds that you'd like to record. This is true whether you're in a studio or out in, in the field. And every microphone has a finite set of sources on which it's going to sound great. And that's what the green circle represents. And so, what you'd probably want to do uh, as an engineer is to have as many of these green circles as you can to fill up that gray circle, right? Because no one microphone is great at everything, despite the fact that some manufacturers will tell you, this microphone's great at everything. Uh, they're probably lying. <laughs> so, um, so you need to have a lot of different microphones that have overlapping circles, okay, to fill up this gray, gray area. And that way, no matter what source comes in, uh, you have the right tool for it, okay? Because there's different kinds of singers. There are some people who are more nasal sounding, some people who are really sibilant, some people have you know, deep chesty voices that can get muddy if, if they're not mic'd properly. But even outside of, of uh, vocals, there's other sources, right? There's guitars. Now, a guitar is not a single source any more than a voice is a single source, right? There's as many voices as there are people. And there's about as many different guitars, too. Some are big, some are small. They resonate at different frequencies. Some have strings from 1975, and some are, you know, brand new strings from last night, and they're, and they're much brighter, and they have a lot of attack. Some people play with their fingers, some people play with a pick. The pick could be thin, it could be thicker, right? All of these are factors. Then there's the room, of course, too. For any of these kinds of sounds, you need the right tool to record that. So, um, we talked about uh, sonic diversity. So here's one way to do it. Now, this is not a shopping list. This is just an idea, right? This is the, the counterpoint to that slide that showed three expensive German microphones. Um, so here's a way to spend less than half as much money and get a whole lot more breadth of coverage, okay? Those three Neumanns, great microphones, but they all sound exactly the same. Whereas these sound completely different, intentionally, all right? So you've got some dynamic mics on the left side there. Uh, dynamic mics, and we'll talk about microphone types a bit more over the course of this, uh, this conversation, but uh, dynamic microphones are great for loud sources. You know, you've got your brass instruments, you've got your drums, things like that. Um, the next pair, uh, pair of AKG small diaphragm condensers, fantastic for drum overheads, acoustic guitar. A couple of ribbon mics in the middle. If you've never used a ribbon mic, uh, you should know that they sound different from everything else, right? Ribbon mics just have a very different and very characteristic sound. And, um, and it's one of those things, you know, if, if that's the sound you're going for, there's no other way to get it. So uh, it, a, 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 a capable mic collection would have ribbons in it. And there's a few different flavors of condenser microphone. 
Uh, and again, the point of this is that these all sound different, so that if I had just these microphones and no others, I'd be pretty confident that no matter what came into my studio, I'd do pretty good, I'd be okay. Like my tools wouldn't be holding me back. Okay, so we're going to talk about microphone types. Um, and, and I classify them by the transducer type, and we'll talk about that. But uh, left to right here, we've got a ribbon mic, uh, a dynamic or moving coil dynamic microphone, and then a condenser on the right side. And these are classified by type because, um, because the type of transducer affects the sound of the microphone. So, uh, so we'll look at these in more detail, but from again left to right, there's a ribbon. Uh, you can actually see the, the ribbon in the ribbon mic right there. Uh, and then in the middle is a moving coil cartridge, and on the right side is a condenser capsule, a large diaphragm condenser capsule. And we're going to drill a little deeper into condensers as well. So these are the four most common uh, types of large diaphragm condenser capsule. And the reason it's worth talking about these is because they sound different, and that's something that you're going to want to know. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about circuits, and we won't get too deep into these, um, but even at a high level, you can tell at a glance that uh, you can look at these and see that there's something different going on. Um, you know, if, if nothing else, if you don't notice anything else, this one has a big glass vacuum tube in it, and that one doesn't. Okay? So we've just gone through a bunch of examples, and they kind of illustrate this uh, conclusion that the design of a mic determines the sound of the mic. So why do we care? Well, because we're trying to build um, a mic locker that can handle whatever sources we throw at it. So, if you want to buy a mic that sounds different from the ones we already own, we have to find one that was made differently. 